Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So the last class we took a look at uh, oblique shock waves now in a two dimensional uh, flow uh, and uh, whenever there is a turn of the flow uh, towards itself into itself um, it causes compression and oblique shock form. Uh, the way to analyze oblique shocks is to uh, look at um, components of velocity uh, parallel and perpendicular to the oblique shock and uh, parallel to the oblique shock velocity remains the same across the oblique shock while the perpendicular components are related by normal shock relation. So, uh, that was uh, the uh, straightforward understanding of uh, oblique shocks if you understand that it is very easy to analyze oblique shocks. And the other main feature uh, is the uh, way the oblique shock behaves. Uh, to changes in flow deflection which is uh, given by m theta beta uh, relationship. So, there are attached oblique shocks uh, and detached oblique shocks uh, or detached shocks. Um, attached shocks are when the angle of deflection is less than the maximum angle uh, for which a attached shock can be uh, solved and uh, those can be solved using the m theta beta uh, relation. So, we saw all this in the previous class. The counterpart to that is uh, when the flow turns happens away from uh, the uh, mainstream then how do we analyze these uh, features of uh, flow features and then uh, we saw that uh, you get expansion waves or expansion fan. So, how do we analyze expansion fans. So, uh, for this uh, we begin uh, initially with uh, uh, the flow undergoing a gradual turn towards itself and understand what happens as the oblique shock become weak. Okay, so, as oblique shocks be become weaker and weaker uh, then uh, they uh, turn uh, to be uh, very close to Mach waves that we had uh, discussed uh, very early on and uh, uh, there uh, the entropy changes across the uh, oblique shock um, become almost 0. This you can show. Um, so, uh, this is what we had discussed earlier uh, which is the oblique shock when there is a sharp turn to theta and an oblique shock is formed. Now, if you take limits of these oblique shock uh, at the maximum limit the oblique shock can have an angle uh, 90 degree. Uh, to the flow that is the uh, particular uh, form that is the normal shock. Uh, the flow deflection in this case is a 0 that is absolutely normal. Uh, the second one is when the shock can go to very weak values the minimum that it can go towards is a Mach wave. Uh, so, across a Mach wave also the flow deflection is almost negligible. So, you can take it to be 0 uh, and the pressure ratio is 1. So, uh, the two limits for an uh, oblique shock are uh, at the uh, lower limit it tends to be a Mach wave and at the very strong limit it goes to a uh, normal shock. So, both are uh, in the normal uh, in the uh, oblique shock system itself ok. So, now instead of uh, considering such a, a sharp turn uh, the total uh, turn through angle theta can be done through a uh, subsequent or sort of set of small changes small angles. At each small turn you have a uh, oblique shock ok. So, you have an oblique shock, but now since the initial uh, turn is very uh, small uh, the, the delta theta or small changes. Uh, small mm, the shock wave strength is also uh, small ok. So, the same uh, turn theta is accomplished by many waves 
you can keep increasing the number of waves and make the turn more gradual so this is a very gradual turn smooth turn uh, across uh, to the angle uh, theta okay so uh, now let's consider this particular problem a gradual uh, turn so across each small turn there is an incremental change in uh, pressure okay uh, so uh, that is how it happens now uh, uh, consider that uh, uh, so there is a entropy change across the oblique shock and the entropy change is uh, the same as that for a normal shock for normal component okay so that is what is written over here delta s for the uh, oblique shock and this is for a normal shock and here if you substitute if for m, m, m1 you substitute m and 1 then you get it for an oblique shock and in the normal shock discussions uh, we also saw uh, what happens when uh, the strength of normal shock goes weaker and weaker it becomes very small it is called the weak shock limit and in uh, weak shock limit uh, we saw uh, that uh, the entropy goes extremely small okay it's extremely small and the way it goes is uh, to the power cube okay so to power cube so m and 1 square minus 1 the whole power cube this was discussed in the context of normal shocks now in the context in uh, oblique shocks uh, if you look at it now the same angle theta is uh, divided into uh, small turns of very very small angle you consider uh, many many such turns then uh, across each uh, very weak oblique shock uh, the change in entropy is given by this term uh, basically this term or uh, where this is now delta theta so delta s uh, goes approximately as delta theta cube of course so you make uh, theta smaller and smaller delta s is going to be smaller and smaller now what is uh, delta theta so if you divide this uh, turn into n number of uh, turns then theta is uh, uh, delta theta is theta by n so uh, you get uh, you can uh, substitute that there and uh, you get uh, that uh, the change in entropy delta s essentially goes as uh, theta cube by n square okay for uh, a gradual turn now we apply the state condition that n goes to infinity if you want to make it a smooth and continuous turn as n goes to infinity delta s goes to zero or you are getting an isentropic flow so a gradual turn very close to the wall hmm, if you look at it it's an isentropic flow and each wave is actually a uh, very very weak oblique shock in the limit of weak oblique shock it is nothing but a Mach wave okay so uh, you have uh, several Mach waves so this gives us the idea how to go ahead go ahead and analyze the expansion waves because you cannot have an expansion shock so in um, when you have to turn the flow away from the wall uh, the flow has to accelerate hmm, uh, but uh, pressure density and temperature will decrease uh, but that can be cannot be accomplished by a sharp discontinuity like the oblique shock uh, uh, but uh, this uh, small analysis on gradual turns uh, gives you an idea that if the change flow ha happens to change gradually uh, then um, uh, the flow is essentially isentropic and uh, then there is no problem with violation of second law of thermodynamics and so on um, and uh, therefore you can turn the shock or they turn the flow uh, away from itself and this is accomplished so always the flow turn away from um, the flow uh, that always happens by means of a, a gradual turn so a sharp uh, discontinuity of this sense is not possible this is uh, an expansion shock is not possible uh, because always you should have uh, positive change in entropy so what is possible is actually a uh, gradual turn or gradual change in flow so uh, this is the gradual turn uh, away from the flow and the flow remains uh, isentropic uh, and it is bound by Mach waves 
now these are Mach waves. Um, okay, so, this is starting Mach wave nu 1, this is at the end nu 2 and uh, since uh, they are related nu is sin inverse 1 by m. Uh, so, Mach number is increasing across the turn uh, therefore, you have uh, nu 2 is always uh, less than uh, nu 1. Uh, now, in the limit what you can uh, what is considered is this gradual turn this corner can be sharp. So, it can be a sharp corner, but the turn actually happens very gradually in as a series of uh, waves uh, series of Mach waves do the turn to the flow only at this corner you have a uh, um, where all the points are starting. So, that is uh, this kind of an anal analysis. Uh, is uh, done by Prandtl and Mayer. So, this is known as uh, Prandtl Mayer function or Prandtl Mayer angle. Um, the how do we do this uh, analysis? So, uh, we again draw the velocity triangles across uh, one single uh, expansion wave, across a wave, a certain wave, very similar to the analysis that was done earlier for the oblique shock. We look at uh, the components of these uh, uh, velocities. So, uh, before that is the upstream uh, of the uh, uh, the, uh, the expansion wave, uh, you have uh, the velocity v that is uh, drawn over here. Uh, corresponding to this uh, v or Mach number m, you have a um, Mach wave. Okay, so, this is the Mach wave at an angle nu. Uh, so, this is angle nu. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in the with respect to this Mach wave, you draw all the others. Uh, so, as uh, the flow goes through the Mach wave, it undergoes a very, very small change in angle that is uh, d nu okay? and a small change in uh, velocity v plus dv, v plus dv. Uh, but again, the concepts uh, of oblique shock uh, uh, remain that is the tangential component is uh, remaining conserved. So, V t is the same. Uh, what is V t? V t is V cos nu. So, that is what is mu V cos mu uh, is the same as V plus d V V plus d V uh, cos uh, mu plus d nu. So, mu plus d nu that is what is uh, written over here conservation of the tangential component. Uh, now, you know that d nu is very, very small is, uh, is almost tending to 0, it is very small. Uh, so, cos d nu is 1 and sin d nu tends to d nu. Expand cos nu plus d nu using trigonometric relations and you get uh, cos mu cos d nu uh, sin nu Mm, and uh, sin d nu and use these relations. So, you get v plus d v cos mu minus d v sin nu. Okay. So, you get uh, these terms mm, and from here uh, there is a v cos mu term here and uh, a v cos mu term that comes over here. So, uh, they cancel each other. Okay. And uh, you have this term d v uh, d nu sin mu, both are small changes. So, this is a very uh, high order term, the small changes if you multiply together the it becomes very, very small. So, this term is also uh, neglected. So, if you uh, then write down this equation, what you get is uh, d nu is equal to cot mu d v by v. Okay, so uh, this is the equation. Uh, so, what is cot mu? You can draw the angles. So, this is what is mu. Mu is sin inverse 1 by m. So, this uh, side is m square minus 1. So, cot mu is uh, cot mu is square root of m square minus 1. So, that is given here. So, now this particular uh, this particular expression relates d nu, which is known as nu is the prandtl mayer function uh, to the change in uh, uh, velocity dv by v. Uh, now, the uh, idea is uh, can we express dv by v 
um, in terms of uh, Mach number dm can this be done uh, we can do it uh, because v is a Mach number multiplied by uh, speed of sound and that is v is uh, square root of gamma r multiplied by square root of t these are constants if you take logarithm and differentiate dv by v is dm by m plus half dt by t so that's what is given here okay uh, dm by m plus half uh, dt by t now uh, can we express dt by t uh, in terms of dm by m we know that uh, this flow is isentropic so for an isentropic flow uh, t0 by t is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square uh, this we know from first uh, principles from the earlier classes and again you can use uh, the same kind of uh, logarithm your differentiation t naught is constant okay constant t naught is constant so uh, this is essentially dt naught by t naught minus um, dt by t is equal to um, gamma minus 1 uh, 2m and half they go off so m dm by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2m square okay so you get dt by t this is 0 so dt by t is minus gamma minus 1 so you can put this relationship into there and so you get uh, dm by m minus half and then uh, do the algebraic manipulations you get dv by v is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square dm by m and this is substituted and so you get expression for the Prandtl-Mayer function uh, explicitly in terms of gamma and m this is a calorically perfect gas gamma is constant uh, this can be integrated and uh, this is the integration for so this is the prandtl mayer angle uh, once you integrate this it is the prandtl mayer angle here we take uh, so of course you will have a constant uh, the constant is taken uh, that nu equal to 0 at uh, Mach number equal to 1 so when Mach number is 1 uh, the prandtl mayer angle is uh, 0 so uh, once that is taken you get uh, this relationship okay so this is um, given in any uh, charts you can get this and uh, this is a prandtl mayer angle now how is uh, prandtl mayer angle uh, related to the change in angle uh, during a uh, flow turn so the flow turns by an angle uh, delta theta so before this flow turn uh, the prandtl mayer angle is nu 1 and this is nu 2 and nu 2 is nu 1 plus delta theta during uh, a flow turn away from uh, the upstream flow uh, prandtl mayer angle increases so that is what you have to consider during a turn a gradual turn so a compression turn um, the prandtl mayer angle decreases uh, so uh, it takes a negative sign uh, minus delta theta so uh, you should always uh, remember these so uh, for gradual turns um, for both compression and expansion you can use the prandtl mayer analysis and uh, you can relate the uh, downstream and upstream uh, conditions okay so the uh, relationship is new two is nu 1 minus delta theta for compression and nu 2 is nu 1 plus delta theta for uh, expansion expansion or turn away from so uh, what we saw this is uh, here is the analysis of expansion waves and uh, uh, we saw uh, the way to look at this problem is starting from a smooth turn and show that uh, at the weak limit of oblique shocks uh, you get Mach waves and uh, entropy change is negligible there. Uh, so you can accomplish the same turn by a series of Mach waves uh, which is what is done in case of an 
which is the case of an expansion fan where the flow turns away from uh, uh, the incoming flow. Uh, then the Mach number increases pressure temperature density uh, decrease. How to calculate pressure temperature density? Very simple, it is an isentropic flow, use isentropic relations. So, uh, from using those concepts we came to the Prandtl-Meyer analysis and uh, the Prandtl-Meyer relation uh, that relates uh, uh, the Prandtl-Meyer angle and uh, these are the relations for uh, a smooth compression or an expansion. So, now we will apply these in certain flow scenarios, we will start with uh, uh, we can couple shocks and expansions and look at how pressures behave over bodies. Mm. And then the other point is what happens when these shocks uh, they are present in the flow and they interact with a wall or they interact with uh, virtual surfaces in the flow which have constant pressures, what do what happens then. So, these are the questions we will answer in the coming classes.